Sponsored by Brilliant. Get smarter every day and save 20%. Link in the description. Broader bounties, million dollar payouts, beta bonuses, infosec fused iPhones, and more. Apple's head of security engineering and architecture, Yvonne Kerstik, has just dropped some bombshell announcements at the Black Hat Conference in Las Vegas, and we're gonna talk all about them. Hit subscribe and ethically hack the bell gizmo so you don't miss any videos. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. I'm very happy to say that Apple today is announcing an Apple security bounty program. Thank you. Kirstic first announced the Apple Security Bounty Program three years ago at Black Hat 2016. Back then, it only covered iOS and iCloud and topped out at $250,000 for exploits of secure boot firmware components. And while Apple has steadily increased the number of categories covered by the program, it's remained invitation only. Apple would always entertain submissions from anyone. They'd pay out as appropriate, and they'd invite those who made high quality reports into the program. But they purposely kept things small at first. That way they could listen, learn, make mistakes, and figure things out before going wide. You know, much to the frustration of many, measured 999 times it felt like before cutting once, as is their want. And there was plenty to learn from. At the beginning of the year, a teenager discovered a bug that could let people listen in using FaceTime and was unable to get a response from Apple's security reporting system. Just a week later, a researcher refused to divulge a macOS password vulnerability because Apple didn't yet have a bounty program in place for the Mac. So yeah, if you thought all of this took way, way too long, you are absolutely not alone. The knock on Apple has long been that, while they hire some of the best and the brightest from the jailbreak, hacker, and research communities to join the company's security architecture team, which works to prevent exploits, and red team, which works to respond to them, they don't exactly play well with the much broader, deeper community outside the company. Still, Apple has had over 50 high value reports fixed and paid out since the program began, and they've worked to make reporting for everyone easier and more efficient. Now though, they're eager to engage even more broadly. First, Apple's bug bounty program is coming to Mac OS, and also watch OS, TV OS, all the Apple OS. Yeah, it's about damn time. In addition to the other platforms, Apple is increasing the size and scope of the bounties. $250,000 was a lot for a company to pay out at the time. Sure, nation states, the people who make commercial tools for nation states, and the largest and baddest of actors were willing to pay much, much more, but conventional wisdom was to not kick off a bidding war. Instead, Apple wanted to reward people who wanted to do the right thing in a way that made it economically viable for them to do that right thing. It's almost like the old Steve Jobs iTunes rationale. People will pay for music rather than steal it if you offer it at a fair price. In this case, people will report the vulnerabilities they've discovered if you offer a fair reward. Only now, the fairness of Apple's reward has just gone up. For a zero click full chain kernel code execution, you can now get a pinky to finger lips inducing $1 million. What's more, because as Kirstic put it, the only thing better than protecting users from exploits in public software is protecting them before those exploits go public, Apple is offering an additional 50% bonus for anything found and reported in the betas. Also, just like before, Apple will continue to give researchers the option of donating their bounties to charity, and Apple the option of matching it for an even bigger payout. And that's awesome. Apple is also opening up the program. It's no longer invitation only. It's no longer limited in any way. It's now purely merit-based, easier to join, and with expanded categories. It's the one more thing moment though, that's the real kicker. A lot of people will tell you that open source is better than proprietary code when it comes to security. And sure, theoretically, that's absolutely true because the more people that can audit it, the better. But as the OpenSSL vulnerability taught us, just because something is open doesn't mean anyone is actively auditing it, even looking at it. Previously, to audit iOS security, researchers had to either come up with an entire exploit chain all their own just to break into the device's root jail and poke around inside. That or some somehow get a developer-fused device from the gray market. Developer-fused devices, sometimes called prototypes, 
are what are used inside Apple in their supply chain for testing. They're basically pre-jailbroken, and instead of running iOS, they run a diagnostic system called Switchboard. In other words, for researchers who could get their hands on them, it let them get on with the poking, prodding, and you know, researching. Having to come up with their own exploit chain was a huge barrier to entry though. Having to get their hands on a dev-fused device was also an inconvenient, quasi-illegal one. So now, to help open the program up even further, Apple will be providing a new category of device specifically for and to researchers. Not dev-fused, which will stay internal to Apple, but not production-fused either, which are the ones sold to everyone at retail. These new research-fused devices are specifically designed to provide exactly the type of system-level access researchers will need to get on with their researching, including SSH and a root shell. Patrick Wardle, a security expert and principal security researcher at Jamf, told TechCrunch, sure, this is a win for Apple, but ultimately this is a huge win for Apple's end users. Thomas Patasek, security researcher, co-founder of Matasano, and principal at Lodacora said, Apple is doing some smart stuff, partly flipping the script on the economics of vulnerabilities. It's also my understanding that access to research-fused devices won't be restricted. I mean, Apple won't be flinging them out like Oprah. You get a refuse, and you get a refuse, and you get a refuse. There won't be a billion refuse devices in our pockets. And of course, we won't know for sure just how capable and available these devices will be until they start getting into actual researchers' hands. But for anyone with a track record for doing the kind of ethical research these devices will help, should be able to get one. And for anyone who wants to get into this type of research, there's Brilliant. It's a problem-solving website and app with a hands-on approach. It offers over 50 interactive courses, and one of the latest is Differential Equations 2. It explores real-world applications involving advanced differential equations. When the parameters of the Lorentz system are chosen just right, all solutions are attracted towards a very strange-looking set that's neither an equilibrium nor a cycle. Effective learning is about problem-solving, and Brilliant will help you learn and get practice. You'll come away better at solving problems. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head over to brilliant.org vector and get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting Vector. Beyond the bounty, Kristik also gave an unprecedented look into the inner workings of Apple's security architecture, including the upcoming new Find My System. I've covered the very basic, most superficial level of that in a previous video. Link in the description. He also talked about the T2 chip and boot protections, which I hope to learn more about when the talk gets posted. In the meantime, hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you think of Apple's new bug bounty program? Still too little too late or way more than you expected? Thank you for watching and see you next video.